Hey, welcome to the 800 Pound Gorilla Expert Podcast, where we interview experts at helping you grow your business or your practice. I'm your host, Carl Utter, and now today's show. All right, you're in for a treat today. If you are a residential remodeler with a focus on kitchen and bath remodels, then today's show with Kyle Hunt is the perfect place for you. For the last 10 years, Kyle, his focus has been on helping remodelers selling kitchens and bathrooms and addition projects and seeking to increase their profits while shrinking the number of hours they work. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Hunt. All right, Kyle, how are we doing? We're doing, as I mentioned, okay, because I'm at my home instead of my office and there's a six-year-old with a fever downstairs good Kyle tell us tell us a little bit about your company and who is an ideal client for remodel your marketing remodel your marketing so um, shortly after I started my business 12 years ago I, I took some of my own medicine which says you you can't be all things to all people and I'm just gonna work with home remodelers and that's trans turned into um, primarily uh, working with guys and gals that are doing kitchens, baths, and additions. So very much a niche within a niche. What's a sales process? What's a sales process? Now with their, with their sales process from the time the phone rings to all the way through to the completion of the project. And then also dig in with them on kind of their financials and helping them understand their numbers and really understand their markup and what they need to be doing to to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is making money. So uh, what problems do you help them solve, Kyle? Well, um, I help them solve that overwhelming, looming feeling of why am I making so, why am I working so hard and where is the money and how can I make a, a really solid profit in this business? Not necessarily just so I can make a bunch of money, but maybe it's to hire somebody to relieve some of the hats that they have on. Maybe it is um, to hire somebody so they can have work, a better work-life balance. You know, a lot of my, a lot of my successes of what I help people with is, yeah. Um, and that, that just, that's what fires me up is yes, of course, we're, you know, you're hiring a coach and you're working with a coach to make more money. Um, but so much more than that. And the real success factor is, is being successful outside of, outside of work and feeling like you have a business that you're running instead of it running you. Yep. So what would be going on in someone's business, Kyle, that if they were to be experiencing these issues, they should be picking up the phone or I guess, you know, sending you a, a, a message today. I guess we don't pick up the phone anymore, but you know, well, however yeah. people reach out to you, you know, what would be going on though that would, that right. they should be reaching out to you? Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're Snapchatting me. Is that what the kids are doing these days? I think. Yeah. Or LinkedIn messaging or whatever. Um, primarily what's happening is they, uh, you know, they don't have a coherent marketing plan. They're throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. They've tried things and it's not working. Um, so on the marketing side, they know that they need to be doing, especially for folks that are trying to grow their business, they know they need to be doing a better job of staying in touch with their previous clients and have some things that are working on the marketing front. On the sales process side, they're chasing every lead that comes in and they're sick of it. They're hearing buzz about how, wait a minute, I could charge for my design and project development and I could, I could, you know, kind of clean up my sales process so that I'm not chasing and wasting time on every single opportunity that comes in the door. And I can really have a, a, a sales process that, that I can feel in control of. And then on the financial side, the things that they're experiencing, the problems they're experiencing is they have no idea how to read their profit and loss statement. They have no idea if this job was as profitable as it should be. They don't know if their markup is too little, too much. Um, and they're, and they're really frustrated by that. Yeah. I see that. I see that a lot. Um, what, yeah. what common so mistakes? I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling a little bit of pressure with this whole 10 minutes and seven, eight questions. Are we on pace? Are we doing good? I have no idea, but you're interesting and I like listening to you. So we're going to okay. keep going. All right. All right. So, um, so what, pro what are common mistakes you see contractors making, Kyle, um, when they try to do this alone? You know, a lot of contractors are what I call rugged individuals. You know, we got that rugged individualism, you know, we work mm -hmm. hard, you know, we grunt, you know, we get things done, right? You know, that's what we do, you know, as a, as a contractor. Mistakes get made. What are typical mistakes you see getting made? 
I'm just, I, I got distracted there. I was trying to think of, I, I would agree. I'm, you know, rugged individuals and all that entrepreneurial thing. I was trying to remember the last time I grunted while I was working. <laughs> it's been, it's been, it's been a while. I don't know if it, maybe, it, maybe it has happened. So I, I'm an old uh, tool, Tim, the tool man, Taylor fan, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. He is a, I don't know if he actually graduated from Western Michigan University. That's where I did graduate from, but he does have an honorary degree from the Western Michigan University. The Western um, but to your, yeah. Um, to the biggest, the kind of the biggest mistake that, that comes to my mind is there's, you know, you can, you can say focus and use it as an acronym, follow one course until success. What I see so often is there's so many different hats that a remodeler is wearing. It's a hard business. It's a very hard business. Yep. And they know they need to be doing some marketing. They know they need to do sales. They know they need to do this. And they dabble with these things. They have 10 different things they're working on. They're pushing all 10 of those things 10% of the way done, as opposed to picking one thing and saying, okay, during the month of November, what I'm going to focus on is I'm going to improve the initial phone call I have with a new remodeling prospect. I'm going to be excellent at it. I'm actually going to do training on it. I'm going to practice it. I'm going to create a project discovery sheet. So I'm not pulling out a blank sheet of paper. Um, so that whole thought of they're not focusing on things to the point that they're actually implementing them. And the, the mistake that I see is on that finite time of 10%, we're trying to do 10 different things versus realizing if I just focused on one thing per week, per month, and, and actually implemented it, man, would I make so much more progress. Makes so that, sense. That's the biggest Makes mistake sense. is we're not focusing enough. So that leads me to my next question, yeah. which is, you know, if there were one thing they could do, you know, free, a free action they could take and just do on their own to, to overcome these issues, what would you recommend that be? Um, and I think you just said goal. it too. Yeah, pr pretty much. But I'll put a little bit of color or put a little spin on it. Um, pick one goal and make it a smart goal. Specific. We've heard it, right? Specific. Yep. measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound. Pick one goal that's you already have, you already have the list. You're not coming to listen to this stuff so you can get 10 more ideas. You, you've got things on your to-do list and things you want to work on the business from. Pick one of those things, make a smart goal out of it. By November 15th, 2019, I will accomplish this. Maybe Beautiful. on the marketing side, maybe on the marketing side, it might be getting Google reviews. Man, I've got two Google reviews. One of them's crappy, and I need to get six Google, new Google reviews by November 15th, 2019. How are those New York football giants? We all right with Eli getting benched? We don't. Uh, we don't play football in New York. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Are what you all right with Eli? Are, I don't is, know Eli what is, Eli, is Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? Yes or no? One word. Uh, One word. Yes. Yelp. I see a lot of, I, I have a lot of contractors on the West Coast and I see Yelp coming East more and more. I mean, it's here, but I mean, really starting to become a big player in reviews and things like that. Are, are you, uh, is that yeah. something you're here's, encouraging? Here, here's my punchline. Get 30 Google reviews and then let's talk about that. Okay. Because to get to have five Google reviews and then to go get 10 on Yelp is not nearly as valuable. If you gave me 100 reviews and I have for one of my clients and I can distribute it through the web, 80 of those 100 are going on Google. And then, yeah, maybe Yelp, depending on where you're at. In the remodeling world, House is going to get some of those and then they're going to be scattered. But you talk about the 800-pound gorilla. Isn't that what this thing's called? This yep. podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 800-pound gorilla on the search side is, is Google. It still is. And... And those reviews on Google are much more valuable than anywhere else. There you go, folks. And you're hearing it from an expert. So if you're looking to remodel your marketing, that's your, that's your, that's your free tip. And uh, so, um, Kyle, I, I'm sure somebody's going to res this is going to resonate with somebody and they're going to want to know more about Kyle Hunt. Uh, how would they, how would they learn more about you, your expertise? Do you have uh, do you have something on your website people could download? Maybe a video course, PDF. Uh, Maybe. What do you got? Yeah. So what actually, actually, got? two things. Two things I would point to. One is um, if you're listening to this podcast, you must like podcasts. So Remodelers on the Rise is my podcast. Remodelers okay. with an S on the Rise dot com. And then the other big thing that I would point you to, especially if you're a remodeler. If you're not a remodeler doing kitchens, baths, additions, I'm not going to accept you into this group. I know I'm stingy, but that's the value of the group. Um, if you go to remodelerscommunity.com, it'll link to my private Facebook group. And there's about 600 remodelers, just a ton of really good, solid um, education ideas, just a really good community. And then, yeah, if you, if you go to remodelyourmarketing.com, um, I have a free report that's titled Five Simple and Powerful Ways 
to stay in touch with your previous clients. If you did a project with somebody two years ago and they haven't heard from you since then, that's a problem. Big problem I see with just about every, majority, every contract. The majority of the dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, yep, the majority of the dollars for contractors. Go ahead. Especially if you're a good contractor, you're professional, they trust you. You should never lose touch with that customer. I am, I am with you yep. wholeheartedly on that. Um, awesome. And uh, so we get to the part of the podcast I like the best, Kyle. That's where I get to ask experts like you this question. And that is, what's the one question I should have asked you today, but I didn't? The, th the thing that's coming to my mind is, you know, Kyle, I heard you, I heard you talk a few things about that, like a relationship with their wife and their kids and stuff. Like, what does that have to do with business coaching? Why, why did you kind of light up at that part? Um, and the reason I kind of throw that out there is we got to take a long, as business owners, we got to go back to those days when we started our business on why we started our business. I did not quit my job with not a lot of money in the bank with a stay at home wife and a kid so that I could be stressed out. We don't start our business because, you know, we don't start a remodeling business because we want to work an obscene number of hours. And when you actually take a look and calculate the amount of income and, and you brought in for yourself divided by the number of hours and you look at that number and you kind of go, oh crap. Like that's not why we started this business. We started these businesses so that we have more freedom. We have more work-life opportunities for balance. We, we enjoy our work. We're passionate about our work. And oftentimes, you know, our business can just start running us and we lose sight of that. So mm. it, is, it is really important for us to revisit that often. And if it's, if it's out of whack, if we're struggling with that, you got to work at it. It's not going to magically fix itself. You got to seek out experts. You got to read. You got to study. You got to listen to podcasts. And more than anything else, you got to do something. You got to implement. Very good. Very good, Kyle. Very good. So uh, before we wrap, why don't you give us those uh, those websites again? And uh, also, I'll include uh, um, I'll include a link right down here. Um, this will be on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. Cool. Yeah, so remodelersontherise.com, remodelers with an S is the podcast, remodelers with an S community is the private Facebook group, Okay. and then uh, remodel your marketing is where you can download the, uh, the free report, and if you download that free report, then you're on my email list, I can just market to you forever. Well, that's the idea, right? Yes, but it's value, right? We got to we got to remember when we market, you got to provide value. So if you do that, and I start sending you emails, and you're like, this kid, this guy's just trying to sell sell me stuff over and over again. That ain't gonna work. No, you marketing is about building, you know, getting someone who's need to know, like, and trust you. There you and that's go. that's what I that's what I try to do. There you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been Kyle Hunt from Remodel Your Marketing, and uh, we. Uh, we uh, love to bring in experts to help you grow your business. And certainly Kyle has not disappointed. Again, this has been the 800 pound gorilla expert podcast where I ask experts like Kyle Hunt, how to grow your business. Kyle, thank you for being our guest today. Thanks for having me. You bet. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week.